Hi everyone, welcome to my 11th live stream now. For those of you who haven't uh, joined a live stream with me before, or if you're tuning in after the live stream and you're now watching this on YouTube, the format that I'm going to try to follow is when somebody posts a comment or a question, I'll read their name, if I can pronounce it. If I can't, I'm really sorry. I'll just say that right off the bat. And then I'll respond to it. Sometimes I take breaks, just a couple of seconds, to get caught up in the comments because there are more you than me. Sometimes it takes me a minute to uh, read everybody's comment. All right, how is the, the quality, the color, the audio, everything coming in all right? Sometimes um, there are buffering problems. What seems to work for most people is just hit refresh. But um, I've got a stable and internet connection as you'll get. Usually I don't have problems though, so should be okay. Hi everybody. My head looks small this week, computer Duffy. I haven't shrunk any. Maybe I just have a smaller ego today. All right, everybody seems the consensus is pretty good for quality. Awesome. I try to get a pretty good balance between having like decent quality video and being actually able to, or actually being able to buffer it and not have it be like stutter, loading stutter, which is kind of how I speak anyway, but you know. Cool. Well, how is everyone doing? Gotten any range time in lately? I just went, actually, I went shooting on Sunday. And it was really nice. Funny thing is, though, I mean, with me being all Wisconsin white and everything, I went out, beautiful, beautiful day, sunshiny and, you know, warm, but very pleasant, and brought the sunscreen knowing that I am pale as a sheet. It's, I understand. I'm pretty bad about that because I don't ever go tanning. It's just not my thing. And I totally brought the sunscreen and completely forgot it in the car. Left it in the car the entire time. Even I have my dad out with me and he's like, hey, Dust, you know, make sure you remember to put sunscreen on you know, so you don't become all lobsterfied. I totally got a really, like, nasty sunburn. It's really, it's, it's bad. It's bright, like, pinky red, and it looks like I've never seen the sun before, which is pretty close to the truth, seeing as how I'm a hermit, and most of my range shooting is indoor. Disappoint in my moldy burrito. I had it all habaneroed up, too, Savage Henry. Ooh, gross. That is sad. I'm not much of a cook, but one thing I can do reasonably well are burritos. That and tacos, but they're pretty close, at least the way I make them. Not a whole lot of difference. Mark Roig. Yes, actually yesterday. Used my High Point 9mm and my Colt Peacemaker 22. Oh, that Colt Peacemaker sounds like fun. All right, I'm getting caught back up on, on comments here. John B., I'm having trigger time withdrawals. Two months since I last since the last shot fired. Oh, sad. I'm fortunate in the fact that even with the, the ammo shortage that, you know, kind of made it difficult to go shooting since, like, November, I've been able to shoot pretty regularly still. I try to go, like, twice a week or so. I'll go more if I can afford it and if I can find the ammo, but at least like once a week. Then I start like jonesing because not only is it something for me to I do videos and I do training, you know, for self defense and I do I do reviews, but also I just plain enjoy it. It's kind of a stress relief for me to to go to the range, get in my lane, and just enter my little bubble of focus. When I ha especially when I'm having a really good shooting day, that's all I see in here is just my front sight and my shots fired. I don't even notice if there are other people around me if I'm like really in the zone. Those are those are always my favorite days. 
Anthony Rodriguez, I finally made it. I've missed every one of your shows and I finally made it. Well, I'm really happy that you were able to join us. That's awesome. One of the things I do with this chat is I host it for an hour and a half. So I try I try to make it a little bit easier for if you can't make it for the entire hour and a half, you can pop in and pop back out. So it means our viewership fluctuates a little bit. Um, one bad marine took out four handguns, got stung by a bee. Good times, lol. I totally got stung by a bee too, just like, not last week, but the weekend before. I was out shooting and the bees were just loving that particular range. And I, I wear high tops a lot. I just happen to really like Condor shoes. They crawled into my high top and stung me on my ankle. And I figured he deserved it if he was willing to work that hard to climb into my shoe. But he, I guess I, he earned a bee sting. Luckily, I'm not allergic, so no panicking or anything. It was just like, oh, well, that's not fun, because then the top of my high top kept rubbing on that stupid sting. Uh, a f Randy, a few weeks ago, I was able to teach a friend's 10-year-old son to shoot a couple of my 22s. Awesome. My dad got me started, like, learning firearm safety as a kid, but that's still one of our fam favorite, like, family bonding activities is to go out to the range together. Even my little sister shoots, and I say little, but she's a teenager, so she's not, like, super little, but to me, she'll always be little. Charger8923, it has been a year and a half since I last went shooting. Ah, oh, heartbreak. One bad marine, I didn't get to shoot that bee, but I took out some cohorts, lol. Nice, he got his just desserts. Um, one bad marine. I got to shoot the Liberty Defense USM4 9mm. Have you heard about it yet? I have not. I will have to go after this live stream and look that up. Um, Born Freeman. I have audio, but no video. Uh, refresh? Sorry. I guess that doesn't really help if you can't hear me. <laughs> I'll have to type that out. Um... Just a quick question. I like to ask this um, during live streams. Where is everybody from? Where is everybody viewing? Obviously, obviously, you guys know I'm from Wisconsin in the United States, but I know a good deal of you are from other places. Del Reed, I am late. Hi, Destiny. I found your arms guide today, and Sig, sweet. I really enjoy writing for the arms guide, and and managing that site. I have a crew of like such awesome writers. I mean granted I handpick them so I work with people who I I know are gonna be great for the site. But I've just met a lot of really awesome people within the firearms industry and the people I work with on the arms guide are fine examples of that. Plus they make great content on guns and we get to talk about the shooting sports all the time. It's wonderful. Alright, let's see, we've got Arizona, Northeast Ohio, Miami Beach, Connecticut, the Burbs of Chicago, um, Branson, Missouri, originally from Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Oh! Uh, in the mountains of East Tennessee, from Moline, Illinois, southeastern Pennsylvania, middle of nowhere and five miles from hell, president accounted for, ma'am. Hi, Steven. That's so cool. This is your first live stream that you've joined, right? Rad! I'm glad we finally roped you in. <laughs> Thor to Shane, the faraway exotic land of Minnesota. France. Finland. Oh, that's cool. Minnesota, Janesville, Wisconsin, Bridgeport, Connecticut, Blacksburg, Virginia, Chesapeake, Virginia, Shelton, Connecticut, Kansas City, Missouri. Rhode Island here. Hello, Destiny. Hello, Rick. Pleased to have you with us. South Carolina, St. Louis, Missouri, Beaver Dam, Wisconsin. Oh, a fair chunk of us Wisconsinites. Wisconsinites unite! New Jersey, the worst possible state. Oh, it's pretty bad as far as firearms restrictions go. I mean, California's not really ideal either, though. Denton, Texas, Washington State, wow, Canberra, Australia, West Monroe, LA, sweet, oh, hi, Nate, 
I was just talking about you guys. Stephen Hildreth and Nate Granzo are both contributors for the Arms Guide, which I was just referencing just a little bit ago. And they're radtacular. So if you haven't stopped by and checked out our articles, head on over there. We've got a bunch of really cool contributors. And they all bring something a little bit different to the site, which is fun because you don't want to just read me all day long, right? Um, all right, let me see. Let me get some comments here. Uh, Jofa Beats. Destiny, how much ammo are you burning up at the range when you go lately? Um, this weekend I shot probably 300 rounds altogether, um, some 5.56, five, uh, some 45, and some 9mm. That's kind of standard for me. Uh, Born Freeman, maybe this live stream iPhone app is the problem with video. Is it better on a laptop? I mean, you sound great. Oh, well, I don't know. I've actually never used it on an iPhone, considering I'm always here on the laptop, like, looking at you. I can try it next time. Oh, my dad's saying that he can try it. He's my producer slash helper slash troubleshooter slash awesome person. So. Jofa Beats, 300 is more than I'd feel comfy shooting right now. Well, what I do is... Well, sometimes if I'm lucky, I'll get a, and I can get a hold of a whole lot of one particular kind of ammo. I'll shoot that, but yeah, I can go through 400, uh, 400 rounds of range trip. That's usually only if I'm trying to do some test and eval, though, that I want to go through that many rounds at one time because I don't feel comfortable writing an article on a gun, uh, reviewing a gun, unless I have at least like six hundred rounds through it. Because you you learn a lot. Um, over that process of how it handles, how it feels, where the trigger breaks, that kind of stuff. Before the crunch, you used to do like seven, eight hundred. Yeah, before the ammo crunch, I was shooting more, like seven and eight hundred, as my dad mentioned. But I still try to get in some pretty significant trigger time, and I still go as frequently. I'm just um, a little bit more. Well, I'm willing to work a little bit harder to go find the ammo. So instead of just counting on it being at my local Walmart, which I'm seeing a little bit trickling in now and then. Like I went during the middle of the day uh, last week and saw some nine mil on the shelf and some twenty two, which was just you know stellar because twenty two is like as rare as unicorn tears. But mostly I'll I'll go out to the local gun shops in the area and I'm on pretty good terms with them, so I can just ring them up and ask them, hey, do you have anything in right now? And if they do, then I go and I'll drive out to go pick it up or pick some up. But if I if I see it, I get some. So that allows me to, by getting some here and there all the time, I can have a reasonable amount to shoot when I want to go to the range. Oh, um, I went to Gander last week, and besides falling completely in love with a pair of Ruger Vaqueros, there was like, um, a huge pallet of 556, like a hundred boxes for like pretty reasonable price. What was it like eleven dollars a box? I think, which you know, not not hard for twenty rounds. I was pretty pretty pleased with that. I definitely picked up a bunch. I got like three or four boxes from that just because it was it was so hard to pass up. I mean, it was right there. Born Freeman, twenty two is unicorn tears. Um, one bad marine. It is semi-frangible, but don't prejudge the stuff. It's dumping way more energy than normal carry ammo. 9mm to 45 power. Oh, okay. Well, I think I missed the thread of that conversation. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, Scott, what are your thoughts on softrep.com becoming a subscription site? Any fear Brandon might do that with the arms guide? I'm not really sure. I mean, he's just setting up soft rep with those changes so I'll definitely be watching it to see how it works out I'm interested to see if how or, or whether or not it makes makes any or it affects it at all and I suppose if it's a good model if it works out then it might be something to consider down the road but the arms guide is such a small site in comparison to soft rep I mean we're only like six months old and soft rep's got at least a year on us so I don't think that well, for the most part, all I'm really worried about is getting out great content. Uh, 
Uh, Scott, oh, whoops, I meant Kenny. What is your opinion on Tula ammo, or of Tula ammo? Sorry, I can read, really. Um, for the most part, the biggest thing that's important to me is can I get a hold of it? If I've got the option to buy Tula instead, or buy Tula or buy nothing, I'm definitely going to get Tula. Um, so far, I mean, as long as I'm not shooting it through, like my Kimber once in a while will hiccup on Tula just because it's picky like that, but that's pretty much the only problem I have with it. My M9 will eat up just about anything. You can shoot a thawed chicken through that, it doesn't care. I, I don't even clean it. I just oil it every, like, thousand rounds or so. But I don't really have an issue with it, and the fact that it's cheaper doesn't make me feel bad about buying it either. If I'm doing, or if I'm running something through, like, a carry gun, specifically, I'm, I'm may not want to run Tua through it um, while I'm breaking it in. Like when I get a brand new gun, I might want to run something a little bit um, nicer, I guess, but I'm not really picky. Uh, Charger8923, what knife do you have on you? Actually, I actually have a couple of them. I have this one. The Secret Edge by Cold Steel. And then I have my Benchmade Triage. Because one knife would just be boring, right? Alright, I'm getting caught back up on comments. Um, one Bad Marine, are we going to see you in more Google Plus Hangouts, and are your fans aware of that content of yours out there in YouTube land? I do get invites for YouTube Hangouts now and then. I just uh, went on a chat, or a Google Hangout, sorry, with Artisan Tony that he hosted um, just last night, actually. It was, really, it was really pleasant. It was a nice time. I liked having conversations like that with people, especially because it gives me another opportunity like this to interface with people who enjoy the same stuff I do, YouTube and guns and gear. The big thing for me is when I join other, or the complication for me with regard to Google Hangouts is that they're on other people's schedules instead of my schedule. So sometimes it's a little difficult for me to make sure that I have the time set aside to join somebody else's Google Hangout. But I like joining them, so I try to make the time. What helps is knowing in advance and trying to sh so I can shuffle around the things that I need to shuffle around to make time. I don't always get the opportunity to join the conversations I'd like to, but it's definitely something that I will be doing in the future, joining others uh, Google Hangouts. Um, Scott Massino, do you run any combat effective drills outside or do you just shoot paper at the range? I have been fortunate enough to, be, to have been able to attend some training, some firearms training, a couple of times a year. And I really enjoy the opportunity to do not just the static shooting, but, you know, movement, learning to use cover and concealment, um, emergency reloads, and more tactical kind of training. But I don't know, I don't really do like a military style defense. It's more... Um, well, civilian style self-defense. I guess it's got a kind of different mindset to it. Um, how'd you do, 22? That is an awesome uh, username, by the way. That's fabulous. What do you think of the Taurus M9 copies? Um, I don't actually have any experience with them, so I can't give you a whole lot of feedback. I mean, I have my own Beretta M9, and I like it except for that side-mounted safety, which I cannot stand, so I don't use it. But if it's the same, then I like this, the, the style of handgun, but I don't really have any experience to tell you, like, oh, that's not reliable, or it's the best thing I've ever shot, or whatever. Stephen Hildreth Jr. Practice makes proficient. Mmm, that rings a bell. Like maybe from the first article you wrote for the Arms Guide or something. But, I don't know, probably something else. I probably heard it somewhere else. 
Um, Okami Jigoku. Tula is a really low quality, but something like a Mosin will eat it all day. It doesn't matter if you get a split case in a Mosin. My Mosins love Tula. They don't have any problem. They're hardy as heck. I, th I think I would have to try to hurt one of them. Not that I would, even though they only, they're only like a hundred bucks a pop. I still really enjoy my Mosins. As long as a cheap gun works and does what I want it to do, I don't have any qualms about, you know, spending less money on it. I guess that's part of why I buy, um, I'm not afraid to buy used guns either. I have some used guns, some new ones. Kind of depends on what I want, what's available, and how patient I am. That is probably the biggest factor, honestly. I am a terribly impatient person, and it's bad for my wallet. Randy, I've run Tula in all my guns, and I've never had a problem yet. Yeah, the only real issue I've had with Tula is um, with Kimmy, my Kimber. And it's only been, like, all stovepipe, and when I pull the casing out, you can see it's slightly irregular in shape. The tolerances on that firearm are um, kind of tight. Um... Let me get caught back or uh, caught back up. Scott Massino. Ma see no. Sniff sniff, she got it right last time. I'm sorry. That's why I apologize ahead of time if I don't get your names right. Cause I just read things and I don't know. It's so difficult to make sure I'm applying the right phon the correct phonetic rules, especially for names. But I, I promise I'm not trying to, like, botch your names on purpose. I'm just really bad with names. What drives me uh, crazy is all my life, everybody remembers my name because it's super unique, right? I'm, I'm always that chick with the really weird name. Or that Destiny girl. But then I can't ever remember anybody else's names. So I have gotten into the habit of when I meet somebody, especially if I'm meeting, like, maybe three or four or five people at one time, I have to say their names out loud a couple of times to try and make sure I remember them. I had to do that, especially with going to stuff or events like um, SHOT Show or the NRA convention or even just more or smaller shooting events like uh, Corey and Erica's Second Amendment shoot. If I meet a group of people, I feel so awful, you know, I make, I feel like I make such an awful impression if they introduce themselves and they remember my name and I don't remember theirs. I mean, it's kind of a jerk move, or at least it feels that way. All right, I'm getting caught back up on comments again. Stephen Hildreth Jr. should read Nate's stuff too, and the other Nate, and the other Steve. Of course, if you're not reading Dest's articles, you're wrong. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure how that just came to be, but we have on the Arms Guide crew two Steves and two Nates, and they're all fabulous, and I'm really happy to have their, their contributions. They have very unique voices, and that definitely comes out in their pieces, and they have a different flavor of um, subject matter that they, like to dis that they like to discuss. But that cracks me up, and I have to differentiate Nate G or Nate S or whatever. It's It gets more difficult when I'm trying to talk about, like, the group of writers at a time, like with my dad or with my brother or something like, oh yeah, I was reading this piece from Nate. We're like, yeah, that's nice. I still don't know what you're talking about because it could be one of either of them. But kind of a fun fact. Jason S. Des, do your regular ranges tend to recognize you? It was an odd feeling hitting the range for the first time in a while and having guys ask where he'd been. Uh, yeah, they definitely recognize me. I'm on a first-name basis with pretty much anybody behind the counter. And if I don't show up, like maybe I'm I'm busy or I go to a different range for a little while and then I come back to the first range, they'll be like, hey, where have you been, Des? Do you usually come in on X, Y, or Z or whatever? It's really nice. I A lot of times I go to the range with the intent of making a video. I've got all my camera gear. I've got all my guns. I've got all my ammo, my targets, and everything set up. And then I, like, plop down and I start chit-chatting with everybody. Or I'll head to the gun counter and start perusing, see if they've got anything new in. I spend at least an hour there just, like, shooting the shiz with people because they like guns. I like guns. Automatically we have something to discuss. It's... It's pleasant. 
Jeffrey Beats, don't forget Henry's too. I haven't forgotten Savage Henry. I just think that he likes reading more than he likes writing. It's, um... He's welcome to, to have posts whenever he likes. I, one of the things that's important to me as a managing editor is to work with my, my authors. So they write on their schedules, and I try to work around it. Um, hey, Des, how has your experience with Young Guns TV been? I wanted to love it, but it just seems like it's missing something. I can't say I have any, like, real complaints about it. I'm still getting used to it and kind of figuring out what I want to do with my Young Guns presence. But so far, so good. Is there anything in particular you'd like to see from Young Guns that you're, that you're not? John B., I like to read more than I write. I do, too. I had, with the, the traveling that I've been doing these last few weekends, I picked up, um, I have a Nook. I know everybody else has a Kindle, but I've got a Nook. And I downloaded The Hunger Games, and then I read them all, which was really awesome. But me reading The Hunger Games didn't get any articles written, so I had to work extra. Okay, getting caught back up. Peter Duffy, you mean you're famous? <laughs> no, I'm a former sandwich maker from Wisconsin. I, like, barely know my neighbors. It's just because I'm at the range all the time, people at the range who are also regulars tend to recognize me. And once in a while, when I go to a, a gun shop, like, um, when I was at Gander... Yeah, when I went to Gander that um, last week, when I mentioned I f saw those Ruger Vaqueros that I was drilling over, I had two people recognize me from my videos, which was awesome. I still get a little bit, like, embarrassed, and I totally blushed when the first guy recognized me. But then I kind of got myself under control, and by the time the second guy recognized me, I wasn't as, like, goofy looking. Um, getting caught back up. Uh, Thor DeShane. That Katie Francis makes me feel very inadequate. A 13-year-old girl who can shoot like that, dot, dot, dot. I am sad. Hello, Al. I think it's really, really cool. I mean, she outshoots me. It's, but I also don't practice as often as I should. But I don't get... I just enjoy that somebody, I, you know, she's a young female who gets to set this wonderful example for other young young people and other, you know, young women who want to get into the shooting sports. I think it's super, super cool to just watch her do what she does and do it really well. Uh, Alright, next comment. TNGunnut94, what do you think of the PX4 Storm? I think it's awesome. I've only run a few rounds through them. It worked okay for me. I I don't know. I don't own one. so And I wasn't so enamored with the style that I wanted to go and drop the money on it. But I don't have a problem with it. Okay, next comment. Anthony Rod Rodriguez. Finally got my Smith & Wesson 686P 6-inch. OMG, I love it. I am a huge fan of the 686P. Um, we've got the 686P plus, or 686 plus P, sorry. And it's one of my favorite wheel guns, for sure. I love the trigger on that thing. In single action, it's just like, pew, feather light. Accurate, too, which is great. Anytime I shoot wheel guns, I can't help but to feel a little, little bit like a cowgirl. Um, by the way, is anybody using a mobile device like an iPad or an iPhone or an Android or something? Just kind of curious to see how that's working. And in the meantime, I will ask another or respond to another comment. Bradley, what were the Vaqueros, Des? Um, the Ruger Vaqueros are a single action um, wheel guns, 
And the ones that I was looking at were chambered in 357 Magnum or 38. You can also run 38s through it. Specifically, I'd want to pick them up for cowboy action shooting. Because when I went and did that cowboy action shooting match um, last month, the guy who sponsored me let me borrow his brand new Ruger Vaqueros. His were chambered for 45 Long Colt, but um, you, if you get 300 or 357 Magnum, you can run 38s, and it's just, it's just cheaper. So for people looking to get started, like me, it makes it just a little more bank account friendly. A lot, a lot of fun though. Um, Born Freeman says he's on, watching on the iPhone, but still no video. Anthony Rodriguez says he's using an iPad and it's working fine. Eric, oh gosh, is that Polish? Kimichek? Ah, I'm so sorry if I pronounced that incorrectly. He says, nope, I'm on a laptop. John B, I want a Smith & Wesson Model 29 44 mag. You feel lunky, punk, do ya? Oh, I'm on an iPad mini. No video, but audio, 5x5. Five five. I'm kind of getting that it may have more to do with the interwebs connection. Bradley, blued, and barrel length, blued stainless steel, barrel length. Big Ruger fan. I love the 357. I've got the Blackhawk at 357. They were, the ones I was looking at were blued. And... Um, I think the barrel length was six inches. I'm trying. It was more or five inches. Five inches. It would have been. It would have been really nice for cowboy action. Not too long of a barrel, you know, as to slow down my draw, but not too short of a barrel as to start making it a little snappy. Scott, I hate the term interwebs. I'm sorry. I like it. I think it's funny. I also use internets, the tubes, a number of them, because just saying internet's boring. Yankee Marshall, the Vaqueros are the best guns Ruger makes. Wow, that's pretty high commendation. I, I, I don't know that I have the experience to say that they're the best guns, because there are plenty of Rugers I have yet to shoot, but I was a fan of them, and I, I didn't have them hiccup on me. I just had, like, maybe two instances, I think, where... No, that wasn't even with the Ruger. I had two instances where um, the reloads I was shooting, the primer didn't go off, but it was the reloads was the problem. Haps sometimes. Happens sometimes. Joe beats Weber Nets. That's funny. Um... How'd you do, Tony Two? Do you have any experience with the Troy Industries Alpha Rail and the Midwest Industries SS Four End? Do you prefer one or the other? I just started building my first AR-15. Ooh, we have a series in progress on thearmsguide.com that you are gonna like. Then um, Nate Schultz is writing a series on how to build your own AR-15. He's a an amateur gunsmith, and he's walking step by step through uh, the process of that of how he builds AR-15s. Um, he's got more experience with it than I do, which is why he's writing the series rather than me. Um, my AR has um, just a monolithic upper, and it's from it's the Daniel Defense DDM4 V7. So it's got the Daniel Def uh, Defense 16 inch pencil profile barrel. Uh, I think it's mid length gas tube and um, the free float rail. But I've never played with any other kinds of accessories. Have, uh, a Midwest Industries no, that was um, Nelson. No, that was Reaper Tactical. Reaper. Oh. And I don't know if it was the SS forend. I just know that it was a Midwest Industries. Was a nice one. It was really nice. It looked really good for weight saving, but I can't recall. I'd have to go like dig it up online to find which, or um, give Reaper Tactical a call again and ask which model specifically. I just know that when I saw it, I liked it because it looked very similar to the upper I have on my, or the rail system I have on my DDM4 V7, but a lighter weight, lower profile. Scott Messino, 
You own a DDM4 V7? I own a DDM4 V7! We're AR twins! Or at least AR upper twins. My lower is an LMT Defender 2000 lower. I just have the stock trigger in it though, and I don't really love it so much. I need to put a Geisley in there, because everybody's... Everybody who has had a Geisley trigger, trigger installed in their AR who has let me shoot it, I've absolutely loved. I have a, a number of different Geisley triggers that I, of which I'm very fond. All of which are better than the stock trigger on my uh, LMT Defender lower. And I say it's an AR-15, my rifle's an AR-15 build, but I didn't really build it. Not in the way that Nate Schultz has, where he's gone and, like, installing the trigger guard, installing the hammer, installing the, um, the mag catch, you know, all the little parts. What I did for my first build, just because it was my very first build, I, I bought an upper, I bought a lower, um, I got a, a stock. So it's more like an assemblage than it is a real like build. But now that I'm a little more familiar with how the parts fit together and because I've been reading uh, Nate's articles and I have a better understanding of how the part the components work internally, I'm definitely going to be looking into or I'm going to be looking let me start that again in English. I promise I know how to use words. I already have my next build planned and I want to build it from the ground up. I think it'd be a great experience. Those might make for some cool video. Who knows? John B., your show works on my Kindle Fire. Oh, that's cool. Yankee Marshall, 1911s are for fat old men. Does that mean I'm a fat old man? I don't know that I appreciate that implication, Yankee. I love my 1911s. Granted, I like other firearms too, but I've got a little bit of a soft spot for 1911s. That's kind of what got me into shooting was my dad's um, Springfield Range, or not the Range Officer, he has the 1911A1 loaded. I still really enjoy that gun. That gun's got a ton of rounds through it. I don't think he like ever cleans it, but we have yet to have a single hiccup. Probably has like 20,000 rounds through it, which is pretty cool. Um, Dave K, do you own any Glocks? Which models? I, I don't know if I lose some gun cred or what for this, but I don't own any Glocks yet. Don't eat me! I, I don't have anything against Glocks. I think they work great for some people. They're not my preference, um, namely because uh, they're not ergonomic for my hands. And I feel like when I shoot them, I have to work against the grip. And it definitely impedes my ability to be as accurate as quickly with them compared to some other styles of handgun. So I'm not hating on people who like Glocks. That's that's wonderful. I, I'm a firm believer in you gotta shoot what's best for you. But Glocks are not what's best for me. Oh man, we've got some Glock vs. 1911 going on. A Yankee Marshall. OBM, real men carry a SIG. I like SIGs too, they're just a little bit pricey, so I have to be a little bit picky about, or a little bit selective about when I go and purchase one. And the main thing that goes against me buying uh, SIGs is the fact that I'm really impatient and I am not so good with waiting and waiting and waiting to save up until I have enough money for something. It's bad. <laughs> as far as guns are concerned, I mean, I still make my bills and everything, but... For the fun stuff, when I want a gun, I want it now. Especially if I'm already at the range, I want to go shoot, you know? And Joe for Beats, the Battle of the Guns is happening live. Actually, we're going to have some more Battle of the Guns coming up on the Arms Guide on Thursday. So, for those of you who have a strong opinion one way or the other, or just want to see some really colorful conversation, Stop by the Arms Guide on Thursday. We're going to have a couple of fun articles going live. Peter Duffy, real men carry NAA 22s. Absolutely. Dimitri Volkov, Des, do you run an ambi charging since you're left handed? I have been meaning to pick up an ambi charging handle. I've actually even tried a couple of different ambi charging handles that, um, some of which I've liked and some of which I've liked less. And I definitely need one. I just kind of haven't gotten around to picking one up. Not really even sure why. I don't. I think more than anything, I've just forgotten that I need to order one. 
if it were at my gun, uh, the local gun stores that I go to, just kind of sitting out and behind the counter or something, I'd probably buy one because then I'd remember it. But if I don't write something down, phew, I lose it. Jason S. Des, how often do you interact with the other shooters while on the line at the range? I enjoy the chances to share my experiences and vice versa with people. Um, pretty regularly I chat with people who are shooting, but I don't go out of my way to walk up to somebody else in, in the range, in part because I am hella shy, and that is, like, intimidating to go up and talk to a perfect stranger. It just makes me, like, freak out, like, oh gosh, what if I say something dumb, what if I bother them, or... I don't know. I'm just shy, so I always have been, and I have a hard time, you know, going up to people. But if I see somebody kind of looking at the guns I'm shooting, or they're shooting something that's drawing a crowd, like um, a Smith & Wesson 500 or something, you know, it's just making a big boom, and they're drawing a lot of attention, or they're shooting full auto, then everybody's kind of like, you know, peeking over into their lane. And I gauge on how receptive they are to conversation. So once in a while, I end up uh, chatting with people, but more often than not, it's because they've come up to me, not because I've come up to them. Um, <laughs> TN Gunnut94, Destiny's losing her street cred up in here, lol. Hey, what you gonna do? I don't have any, like, ego tied to um, my shooting or the guns that I like, so I have no problem joking around and... If that puts me at the butt of a joke, that's cool. I know it's all in good fun. Um, I'm thinking with uh, some of the people who are on mobile devices, like the tablets, the iPads, the um, mobile phones and stuff, we're maybe going to uh, try multiple streams, maybe with some lower quality and some a little bit higher quality and see if that is a little bit easier for you guys to, to watch without being in Buffer City. Um, let me get caught up again. Yankee Marshall just switched to my iPad mini and had video and audio but there was a couple seconds of lag. Well hopefully with what we we'll try next week that'll be a little bit easier for um, you guys on those those types of devices. Yankee Marshall, the world needs stupid people, so Glocktards serve a purpose. Ooh. Stephen Hildreth Jr., I want my pistol to be a workhorse, not a trophy ornament. Mine not some. I've got some 1911s that are uh, plenty hardy. I'm... I have a couple of firearms that I like keeping a little nicer, especially the ones I spend a, um, a little bit more money on, or they just look prettier. Yes, I am a girl, and I like pretty guns sometimes. It's not my first priority to get something that looks nice, but um, even with those guns, um, they're not they're not jewelry guns. Granted, I don't go out of my way to give something a scratch, and if I do scratch a gun, it's like, oh, okay. But, like, my Kimber, it's got wear, my holster wear, from me carrying it all the time. Hasn't affected how well it shoots, though. I, it's still a, a tack driver, which is important to me for a piece I'm going to carry. Um, Thor to Shane, any opinion on para 45s with the 14-round mag? I like the concept. I like that they're a higher capacity um, in a s somewhat 1911 configuration, but having that double stack mag of 45 is just too wide for my hands. I've got these, you know, little girl hands, and I feel like I have to struggle with the grip. So, I guess they might be great for some people with like bigger hands, like, you know, any dude pretty much ever, who isn't, you know, tiny hand-sized like I am. Stephen Hildreth Jr., but day-to-day -day care of uh, day-to-day carry, Glock all day long. I end up carrying... I don't stick with one specific firearm for my carry, but granted, I'm a female, so I dress in 
sometimes less than practical clothing, I guess you could say. Like today, I'm wearing a skirt, which is not super great for any in the waistband carry. So I have to use alternative methods of carry, if I, unless I just want to forgo carrying entirely, which I don't. <laughs> but that does mean that I do more practicing than perhaps some people. I think it's important for me to get some muscle memory established for my draw and different, especially if I'm going to be changing firearms or styles of carry. But I would rather have the opportunity to carry, even if I'm wearing something, you know, girlier or whatever. Scott Messino, oh no, did you buy the DDM4 because it was pretty? No, I bought it because it was lightweight, and my main goal with that particular build was to be lightweight and maneuverable, especially because I'm not particularly blessed with upper arm strength, upper body strength. Um, I'm kind of a wuss when it comes to like push-ups and stuff. So having a rifle that's going to be a little bit lighter weight means that I can um, keep it at the high ready for longer before my arms get tired. So a lighter rifle means more shooting for me. Although I do have a couple of heavier builds in mind, but they'd be more like distance and precision oriented, and that wasn't the purpose for my DDM 4v7. Um, Cypher 134, have you shot the MP shield? I've shot a little bit of it. I put like two magazines through it at uh, an event where there were a few of them, but because it was an event where a number of people were switching off range time and I could only get so much ammo and I didn't really get a huge opportunity to test it out. The biggest thing that I noticed is that the trigger felt like a kind of standard M&P trigger, which I'm not totally in love with the M&P triggers, but that, I wouldn't say that it's enough to make it like a bad gun or that I even disliked it per se. I'm just not a huge fan of the trigger on them. It's a little squishy. Um, Randy, I don't get the big attraction for the 1911. Big, heavy, lower capacity than a comparable polymer gun. My preference for a 1911 is specific. I have one... A, I have a value, or I place value on the fact that I can shoot a 1911, namely my carry 1911, better than virtually any handgun I've ever picked up. And that confidence in how well I can perform with a 1911 is extremely important to me. I don't want to have to draw my carry piece and then have to think, okay, do I hold high, do I hold low, or is my grip exactly perfect? or whatever, I don't want to have to concentrate on how hard I should be working to make my shots accurate. With a 1911, I don't. The ergonomics fit me, and I shoot well with them without trying really hard. But there is also some value in just, uh, there are some 1911s that I enjoy, like my 1911 range officer, my Springfield range officer. That one is I just like shooting it. I enjoy it. I like the style of the 1911 because I like how the how full metal guns weigh. They seem to absorb recoil, or they feel like they absorb recoil a little bit better. And the grip angle suits me extremely well, and it just doesn't fit me as well with the with a Glock specifically. But 1911s aren't the only guns I carry, so there. Are, if I have confidence in how well I'm going to perform with a firearm, I'm confident in carrying that. And that extends to diff uh, several different types. All right, let me get caught back up on some comments. Oh man, there's quite the battle in here. Randy says, interesting, I can shoot my Glocks, M&Ps, and CZs as good as mine three 1911s. I love CZs. They shoot really nicely for me. The ergonomics of a CZ are, I've found are really difficult to beat. As far as my, my particular hand size and shape goes, they just melt. It's beautiful. It feels well, kind of like a double-stacked 1911. 
well, in 9mm, but I may even like the CZ's ergonomics a little bit more than some 1911s I've shot. Because it's round in just the right places, and it's flat in, the, in others, and the angle is just right, but that's my experience. I mean, not hating on any other kinds of guns, your, you know, Glocks or your M&Ps or your cars may work really well for you. I am a big proponent of shooting what fits you best. That's why uh, when I have a number of people who come and ask either through YouTube PMs or comments or emails or, you know, um, comments on my articles. A lot of people ask me, well, I'm looking for my first gun. What should I get? It's such a subjective question because what may work well for me may be like the most uncomfortable, awkward, you know, unideal type of firearm for you ever. And I, how can I know? You know, I don't have your hand size. I don't, I don't know what it is specifically in your head you're looking for as far as purposes. So I generally try to lead with questions. Well, what are you looking for? What do you like? And recommend people to try out shooting guns for themselves if they can, you know, rent stuff. Uh, Yankee Marshall, I do not like Glock's grip angle. It requires you to break your wrist to point, or to point it straight. I, like I said, I, can't, I don't actively dislike Glocks, but the grip angle and the kind of boxy um, grip itself doesn't suit my, my hands well. I end up preferring a 1911 or a CZ, or even the Springfield XDS. The nice, like, slim profile seems to fit me well. Scott, have you shot a Caracol? Not yet. I'd really like to, but um, at least at the, the gun shops I frequent, I haven't seen one around lately. I have my eye out, though. I'd really like to get some trigger time on one. I've heard a lot of great things. Steven, are you trolling my chat thread? I think you're having too much fun. Nate Granzo, here's a good question for you, Dest. What are your thoughts on the Browning High Power? Well, I've never gotten to shoot one, but they sure do look nice. And they look like the grip angle would fit me well, so I would definitely love to get my hands on one. But that's another firearm that I haven't seen in the local gun shops a whole lot. I'd have to go out of my way and order one. I like their 9mm carbine I shot. Remember that? When um, JJ was showing us? Yeah, that's what they are. High power or high point, Daddy? I was talking about the Caracol. Oh, okay. Yeah, I had forgotten about that. Alright, getting caught back up on comments. Give me just a sec, guys. Jofa Beats, I want a Red Rider repeater BB gun. Heck yeah! That's That was like my first, I guess, gun, if you could say. It was my brother got the BB gun for Christmas one year from my grandfather, and I may or may not have thrown a tiny little bit of a temper tantrum because I was, you know, a kid. And I was jealous that my brother got the BB gun, and I got, I don't know, some, I don't even remember, like a Barbie or something that I never even touched, and I was mad jealous. And my brother, being the awesome individual that he is, was totally up for sharing with me, which, being a big sister, I, you know, may have tried to exercise some big sister privileges of share, forcing him to share, but luckily, my brother has always been really good about that anyway, so I've never had to be like mean or anything. So we shot a whole lot of his BB gun as kids. It was a lot of fun. And it was a daisy, I believe. No, it was a Red Rider. That's right. Gosh, it was, it was a long time ago, though. That was, like, going on 20 years ago. One Bad Marine says, gotta head out. YouTube PM for you in your inbox. Thanks, Wimpad. I'm glad that you made it for a little bit of the chat. It was fun having you on. 
Tennessee Gun Nut 94, have you ever shot the Jericho 941? I refuse to call it the Baby Eagle. No, I've not shot one. The only thing that I've... Let's see, I've shot the Desert Eagle 1911. It was okay. I, I don't know. It just it didn't have any like particular features that separated it. Actually, it had a couple of hiccups. Um, I'm trying to remember what ammo I was using with it, but I think it was just regular old like um, PMC. Del Reed, a Red Rider is a daisy. Well, it just goes to show you how long it's been since I last shot it. Like 15, 17 years. <laughs> Dest, how many, or Randy says, Dest, how many people are on here tonight? 79 people right now, and thank you very, very much to all 79 of you. I think it's really fabulous that you want to spend any chunk of time chatting with me. Um, we topped out at 81, my pro dad sort of is telling me. Yankee Marshall, that chat should be a lot better now that Marine has left. His big belly takes up too much room. Oh my god, Yankee, you kill me. I've had this water here this entire time, but I've been so engrossed in the chat that I haven't taken any sips of it. <clears throat> that is delicious. Uh, Charter8923. Do you ever do any quick hand swap drills? And what I mean by that is shoot one-handed with your strong hand and then swap to your weak hand. Yeah, I do, definitely. I don't think I have any video of me doing that, but I practice it regularly. I end up shooting with bo both hands a whole lot because I'm largely ambidextrous. I can do pretty much anything I do with my right hand, I can do with my left hand. And because I'm left eye dominant, it's just easier for me when I shoot single-handed to shoot with my left hand. Because then it's easier for me to line it up with my, my left eye. I can shoot with my right eye, but it takes so much extra like focus and concentration to tell my brain to just ignore the information it's getting from my left eye. When I, I was shooting um, precision rifle for the first time not too long ago, and I really, really struggled with trying to just use my right eye. I got to the point where I couldn't focus and I had to shut my left eye, which I prefer shooting with both eyes open. But anyway, that ramble was supposed to tell you that I practice with both hands very regularly because I shoot just as well with my left hand as with my right. Born Freeman, I finally have video! Awesome! I'm glad. And hopefully next week with what we're going to try differently, it'll be a little bit easier for you to buffer or a little bit e easier for your mobile device to buffer. Third Shane, I'm ashamed that I let that BB gun rust and got rid of it. Oh, that is sad. We still have my brothers. It's, you know, tucked away in some safe somewhere. I'm not entirely sure because it's his. I don't know where he, where he keeps it. But <clears throat> I like the idea of hanging on to firearms in order to pass them on to later generations. My uh, Winchester Model 94, it's a 1954 model, or it was made in 1954, that was passed down to me by my great-grandfather, and I love a gun with some history, and having history that has been specifically in my family just makes it mean more to me, more sentimental value, and um, I'm definitely a history buff. I love history, so I think that's part of the draw for me for Mosins, to know that they, that the role that they served um, during World War II I'd love to be able to get my hands on some more World War II guns, but <laughs> the Mosins are a little bit easier than some other types of firearms. Uh, Yankee Marshall, that is weird colored water. Um, I am one of those types of people who, even though I know drinking water is really good for me and I need to do more of it, I like can't drink it until I trick myself into thinking that it's not water. So this is water with cranberry, raspberry, and lemonade meal flavoring in it. And now it tastes like super fruity juice. It's like a girly drink, but without the alcohol. Um, Del Reed, our pleasure to watch you, Destiny. Uh, Tennessee Gun Net 94, thank you for spending the time to talk to us. Aren't you guys sweet? I 
have had so much fun with these live conversations, and I really appreciate how patient you guys are with my socially social awkwardness and my like lack of conversational graces. It's I really appreciate it. I understand I'm not the best uh, talker. I've always been that way. When I was a kid, my parents got me a journal so that I could start writing, so that I could figure out how to express myself. And I still, I ended up writing voraciously. Like, I've gone through so many journals just because I find it easier to put my thoughts to paper. I can organize them, I can sound like I've got half of a brain in my skull, and my sentences make sense, and I'm a grammar Nazi. <laughs> so it's given me practice um, as far as learning the mechanics of how to write. And, oh, Dad says that I'm doing great with this live chat. Thank you, Dad. I'm, I'm making progress. When I was in uh, high school, I was a member of some academic competitions where we had, we were forced to learn how to, we had to give a prepared speech, we had to give impromptu speeches, and uh, I kind of ha was forced to learn how to perform on the fly. I mean, with impromptu speeches, what they do is they'd give you, you draw your topic, they give you two minutes to prepare, and then that was it. You had to go and give up to a five minute speech on whatever that topic was. It was the most difficult um, portion of those tests. So it has, I have the idea of how to structure um, a presentation to a group, but that was a massive challenge. And even the skills that you learn for public speaking, which is not exactly my strongest um, skill, they don't always apply to like YouTube videos or live conversations like this. All right, let's move on to the next question. I'm sorry. Silver Feather. That's really pretty, by the way. Um, I am military at machine shop. I go back to the early 80s making weapons. Oh, that's cool. That's part of the reason I like going to gun shows is just to like walk through the aisles and see some of the really neat old guns that people have brought. Some of them, they don't even like have them up for sale. They're just kind of there to be like, I've got this cool stuff. And I'm like, yeah, you do. And some of the stories that go along with the firearms are, are really great. Mark Roig, sorry, I had to step away from the stream for the second because of the phone. Well, welcome back. Um... Michael, oh gosh, I hope, Cole Becker? I think that's right. What are your thoughts about shotgun games like Trap, Skeet, Sporting Clays? I love them. They're an absolute blast. I wish I had been introduced to them so much sooner because I had no idea how much I would enjoy it. Um, actually, I have my friend NSC85, Nate Schultz, to thank for introducing me to trap shooting. Because we went out to a shotgun range and he brought, uh, I can't remember what type of Benelli it is, but he brought his Benelli out and... Um, we brought my dad's Remington 870 Tactical and had an absolute blast um, destroying clays. It was great. And I did a video on it. Um, Joe Fabietz, dad of destiny, or DOD, is a behind-the-curtains type of dad. Yeah, he likes supporting his kids. He, he's the same way with my brother and my sister's endeavors as well. I mean, they may not be all out up in the YouTube business like I am, but he's very involved and he is our biggest cheerleader and coach and supporter. He's also great just to, to bounce like ideas off of or any piece that I'm writing. If I either am struggling with the direction that I want to take or even I just need somebody to check my grammar, he is right there um, within a moment. All I have to do is ask. He's my hero. Stephen Hildreth Jr. Dest, we see a lot of focus on your weapons, so but what about your kit? punishment when you were a child helped, helped out, yeah. <laughs> Dad's saying, so all that punishment when you were a child helped out, yeah? Well, you know, when I need a butt kicking, then <laughs> Dad has been there to do that, too. He's helped me learn a lot. Um, but I was reading a comment from Stephen. Uh, 
Desk, we see a lot of focus on your weapons. We, what about your kit? Holsters, mag pouches, chest rigs, if applicable. Yeah, you're right. I should do more vids on gear. I think the closest I get is I do some vids on the knives that I like, but I like a lot of different knives, so what I may be carrying kind of goes through a wide rotation. And some of it depends on where I'm going, what I'm doing, what I'm wearing, and what I'll need. Like, I had one job where firearms and, like, self-defense gear wasn't strictly prohibited, but it was kind of a don't ask, don't tell policy. Like, my boss didn't want to know about it. And as long as he didn't see or didn't know, it was okay. So what I ended up doing was I carried this Cold Steel Mini Tough Light, which is like an inch and a, and a half or just an inch long blade. But it's very nice, highly concealable, and it helped me do things like open boxes. And Then there are other times where, like, I'm going camping and I want something that's going to be a little more heavy duty. And I'll bring, like, my Benchmade Adamus. But yeah, in the future, I'll, I'll remember that I need to do some more, like, gear videos. And I'll see what I can do about putting that together. John B., I wish I had that relationship with my Padre. I have, like, the most awesome relationship with my family ever. It My family is the single most important thing in my life. And I absolutely love it. They give me so much joy. I don't fight with my family. Like, we have disagreements. There are some times where... Um, yeah, I'll have a disagreement with, like, my brother or my dad or something, but we're always respectful, and, you know, <laughs> my dad has this very blunt way of putting things, and sometimes I'll be, you know, a girl and get my panties up in a twist about it, but as dads usually are, he's always right, and I come around eventually. He's helped me also with learning how to deal with other people, which has been massively important in my development against, um, growing against my social anxiety. Because he helps me understand where other people are coming from. He's very, um, perceptive. Colleen Barnett. Hi, Destiny. Sorry I'm late. I'm happy that you can join at all, even if it's for like five minutes, just for me to have the chance to say hello to you. Hello, Colleen. This is Stephen Hilder Jr. Next time, desk, next time you're in Arizona. Arms guide, live fire exercise? I think so. Dude, that sounds like radtacular. I'll be on it like a bonnet. Uh, let's see. Tennessee Gun Nut 94. Do you ever throw knives? I feel like a dork. Um, through martial arts, I've picked up a couple of throwing knives, but I don't really have a knack for it, so I kind of lost interest in it. I don't, I don't do a whole lot with it. I don't know. I just kind of haven't, haven't wanted to work for, you know, work to improve it. Okami Jigoku. Yeah, I was the prodigal child because I sat back and watched my sister make all the mistakes. Not that I've never gotten busted, or my butt beat, or gotten out of line, but mainly because I learned from my sister instead. I was smart. Yankee Marshall. I hate it when my panties get twisted. I know, right? That stuff's uncomfortable. Bradley, Des, you shot the Smith & Wesson 500. Have you shot the 460? If so, how do they compare? Um, I have only shot the 500. I've shot the 4-inch with the 1-inch integrated compensator, and then I've shot the 8-inch barrel models, so I can compare those two, but I've never shot the, the 460. I'd like to. If I had the opportunity, I would totally, uh, I would totally give it a shot. Pun maybe intended. Sorry, all this conversating is thirsty work. <clears throat> Jodine. Ninja throwing stars? No, I don't have any shuriken. I I would like to um, one day, but mostly just for the novelty of them. Just because they're kind of cool. But because it would be almost completely a novelty purchase for me, I uh, don't have one. Yankee Marshall. That is why I stick to thongs. If I weren't wearing a baseball cap, I would so be face palming. But I'm still laughing. Like... I just, I don't even have a response to that. You you are way too good at cracking me up. I don't even have, I don't have any quick responses. Mark Roig. What happened to Dead Eye Destiny, the cowgirl? 
I am saving up so that I can get my cowboy action shooting gear because I can't always borrow other people's stuff. I mean, people have been wonderful about lending gear and helping me get set up and, you know, introduce me to shooting sports like USPSA or, um, or SAS, which is wonderful. But that gear can get expensive pretty quick. I mean... For starters, clearly I needed a new cowboy hat. I mean, obviously. But then there's also, you gotta get a pair of pistols. Um, the lever action rifle that I have, even though it's the appropriate model, the Winchester 94, which would be acceptable, it's in um, 32 Special, which is a rifle caliber, and they only allow pistol caliber. So I need to get a new rifle. Uh, none of the shotguns I own would be acceptable. So that's four guns right off the bat, and I need holsters for them. And, you know, a couple other knickknacks just to make the sport a little bit easier. And then ammo. So, you know, it racks up. But I'm definitely still interested in pursuing that sport. Just because it's a wonderful time. And the people are just lovely individuals. And the atmosphere is very laid back and very pleasant. Um... Del Reed, it is obvious your family is great and your parents are awesome to have raised such an amazing young lady. Thank you. That's really nice of you. Silver Feather, I am upset at gun shows. Girls are skimpy clothed at booths. You got married men who want to see a firearm, not a porn flick. Ugh. Um, and then Colleen Barrett sa Barnett says, Hi, Joe. Silver Feather, I'm in agreement. I don't like to go to them anymore for that very reason. It's also one of the reasons I don't attend shop anymore. I recognize that sex sells. And it's not just unique to the gun industry. It's in all industries. I see it. I can't say I appreciate it because I don't, I don't know. I don't like, I'm not that kind of girl who wants to go and put out, you know, TNA just to try to get attention or views or try to sell something. But if there are women out there who that's what they're okay with, hey, you know, more power to them. There are plenty of people who are out there making their livings as models. But the demographic of which I am a part, it's not a not a really a winning sales tactic for me. Um Mark Roig, have you tried Cowboy Fast Draw? No. Oh, and I recently f um, encountered, through the wonderful world of YouTube, um, mounted um, cowboy action shooting. And holy cow, does that look really cool and also massively challenging. The closest I've ever come to horseback riding are like, you know, going to the county fair as a kid and those little ponies that are on a, a you know, a line and they walk in a circle and, you know, somebody lifts you up and sets you in the saddle because you weigh all of 60 pounds. I don't think that really counts as horseback riding. Hmm. Bradley, build slow into the sport and it won't hit your pocketbook as hard, near as hard. And good used firearms saved money and have character. Oh, I am no stranger to buying used firearms. I don't have any problem with that. But guns are still not as cheap as, like, um, knives. So, it still takes me a little bit to save up for them. But, it's, it's a goal. I'll work my way up there. I've got more gear for USPSA than I do for, um, single action shooting. Or cowboy action shooting. And I'm still not done with setting up my USPSA stuff. Alright, let me get caught back up on, uh, comments. Tennessee Gun Nut 94. I've never seen a half-naked girl at a gun show. There's normally a couple of weird dudes dressed like Daniel Boone or something. Must be a regional thing. At my local gun shows, I don't see that as much, but at some of the bigger events, especially if there are um, people who are using ladies as marketing tactics, you know, as the kind of sales models, if you will, I see that more. Like at SHOT Show, it's a big joke um, with some of the uh, me uh, media representatives, the booth babes, or girls who may or may not know anything about the products they're representing. Some of them do, um, but most of these booth babes are all dressed skimptacular, and they're using them their their pretty faces and their pretty bodies to help promote a product or a service more than their knowledge. 
it's always gonna be it's always gonna be there. I mean, because they're they're always gonna be dudes who like seeing pretty ladies. So as long as dudes like seeing pretty ladies, there are gonna be people who are gonna use pretty ladies and their pretty bodies to help sell them stuff. It's the same with cars and motorcycles and even like music videos. I made the mistake this was this afternoon. Um, saw something in the uh, recommended videos, and I was like, "Ooh, that's a song I like. I haven't heard it in a while." And I clicked on it, and the music video was not what I had expected. I ended up making it through about ten seconds of it before I was like, "No, I'll just listen to that on the radio. I don't need to see that." Jofa Beats, is Aries sleeping? He is, actually. He was just snoring like a half an hour ago, but he seems to have quieted down. He makes some really cute sounds in his sleep. Um... Charger8923, have you ever been hit by a ricochet? Yeah, a number of times. I've also been hit by just the jacket ricocheting back, which was kind of interesting. Um, let me get caught back up. Born Freeman, how often do you go shooting with other ladies? Any plans to do more videos, including them? I have, like, a single female friend who will go out to the range with me on occasion. That is, that's it. And part of the issue with getting her in videos is just we both have, like, really crazy schedules just at the points in our lives, we both have to work a whole lot to keep up with what we need. But I don't have a whole lot of female friends in general because I largely get along with guys better than I get along with girls. Not exclusively. I have some really wonderful female friends and I'm very close with them. But the one is... Like, her dad's an NRA member, but she doesn't shoot. She doesn't have a problem with me shooting, but... She won't go. She doesn't go to the range with me either. And then the other friend, she thinks it's kind of cool that I shoot, and she keeps up with my videos, which is you know wonderful, and I appreciate it. But I don't expect it. I'd say we probably go shooting like twice a year together, which is really a shame. But it's more a problem of I'm not terribly social, so I don't have a really wide circle of friends, and I'm not in a massively firearms friendly environment. I mean, my nuclear family, my personal family is really, they're really interested in firearms, but not a lot of people in my community are into guns. Um, Jofa Beats, she took Molly shooting, but Molly won't let her post the video. I think Molly would love shooting. Remember, she liked the XDS 9mm. Or if you ask her, she likes the XDS 9mm. But... Um, Miss Budinsky, uh, she may or may not have gone to the range with me, and there may or may not be a video titled Confessions of an Anti-Gun Liberal that may or may not feature her talking about her possible experiences. So you may want to go to youtube.com slash fate of destiny and check that video out. I happen to find it fairly entertaining. It's one of my more fun videos. Um, Scott Messino. How come you don't use the trendy C-clamp thumb over bore grip when you shoot your AR? Does Haley and Costa know you're not taming your muzzle rise? I'm more likely to use a muzzle device for... I'm sorry. I'm more likely to use a muzzle device for that purpose. The biggest impediment to me using that um, particular grip style is I have short arms. So, I don't reach, I don't comfortably reach all the way out there. And because I am extending my grip, it's like doing isometrics. After a while, my arm gets tired. And for my, my own shooting preferences, I think that a good compensator does just as much for me in that area of keeping um, my muzzle, or helping to reduce muzzle rise. Like, the Griffin Ar Armament uh, Flash Comp, I'm pretty pleased with. Oh, and I tried this really, really awesome one, uh, Bully Break. That was really remarkable. I was surprised how well that worked. Actually, I have one. I haven't mounted it yet, but this bad boy right here, I shot it, and um, 
the guy who had it mounted on his AR, um, Devin from Reaper Tactical, he's like, try this. You shoot this AR, it will feel like a twenty two long rifle. And I'm thinking, like, yeah, okay, he's probably exaggerating, but, you know, what the heck? You know, an, an excuse to shoot? Heck, yeah, I'm gonna take it, especially a new rifle I've never shot before. But I shot it, and, well, he was exactly right. It felt like it had zero muzzle rise. It just stayed right there. Very, very cool. Which is why I went home with one, because I was impressed. And I'm gonna hopefully have some, not hopefully, I will have some videos using this thing in the future. So keep your eye out. Um, okay, let's see. Colleen Barnett, Destiny, sounds like a good excuse for a shopping spree. Whee! Absolutely! Um, I am just as guilty as a female with a, like, clothes shopping addiction with wanting to get new, like, guns and firearm accessories. Especially for a competition shooting. It is so hard not to be like, well, I need, you know, three magazine pouches really is not enough. I need, like, five of them. And, oh, I tried this style magazine pouch. I need better ones. Or whatever, any number of reasons. It's so easy to justify getting more gear and then having this, like, fun setup. Uh... Tennessee Gun Nut 94. Now that YouTube lady, Bunny Hunter, dresses half naked in her vids, but she actually knows what she's talking about. Hey, you know, if you've got a rockin' bod, it is your, you know, your right to show it off if you want to. Just because I don't choose to include that kind of, uh, that amount of skin in my videos doesn't mean that no one else is ever allowed to show skin ever. It's up to that woman. I'm not judging anybody, you know. They have to make that personal choice for themselves. Um, Thor to Shane, is it pretty much trial and error for finding a good muzzle break? I've definitely used some trial and error myself, but I've had the for good fortune of being able to shoot other people's firearms with different muzzle breaks and f starting to develop a preference based off of those experiences. But a little bit of uh, YouTube research helps too. Because then if you can watch the footage and see the difference, that helps. There's not as much material out there as I would like, but... Argo J had a good video on it recently. Um, Argo J has a, has a video out there on... What muzzle break did he use? Is it the... I can't recall, but it's more, one of the more recent ones. He doesn't have, like, a whole ton of videos to shoot th yeah, or to look through. But he's got a recent series on muzzle breaks. You may want to look into that. Hopefully that'll be some helpful research for you. Tennessee Gun Nut 94. I imagine that Dad of Destiny has an awesome 80s style mustache. Am I correct? Oh my god. That would be really, really funny. No, my dad has a massive beard. Um, he grows a beard like every six hours, so he pretty much just always has one. Yankee Marshall. I dress half naked in my videos sometimes, and I have no idea what I am talking about. Oh my god. <laughs> And your panties are in a bunch. Gosh, what are you doing, Yankee? <laughs> Dmitry Volkov, Thor, 21st Century Gunfighter, has a muzzle break comparison series on YouTube. See, there's some videos out there. Stephen Hildreth Jr., I think Dad of Destiny has spectacles. He sounds like a thoughtful person that quietly analyzes people. Hmm. <sighs> <laughs> Tyler Rowe, I don't judge, I hate all equally. That reminds me of that grumpy cat meme. Um, my dad's actually a talker. He is way more outgoing than I am. He, as far as like his social experiences go, he is like my polar opposite. He loves going up and talking to people. What will drive me totally bonkers is I'll be like grocery shopping or whatever, or just in Walmart with him. Like, one time we went out shopping, and there was this lady, this, like, little old lady who had that fabulous, like, old lady makeup where it's that super bright red lipstick and that, like, teal eyeshadow just kind of, like, pasted all over and um, pencil-drawn eyebrows. 
and she had this entire shopping cart full of tea. Like, um, like the Arizona iced tea kind of, you know, in jugs. Whole shopping cart totally full of tea. There must have been like, I don't know, 20 gallons of tea in there. And I'm looking at her going, oh my gosh, what is she doing with all that tea? And dad, of course, same thing. What is she doing with all that tea? So while I'm actively trying to avoid making eye contact with her, dad just walks on up. So I guess, uh, guess you like that tea, huh? Is that good? And I was just like, dad, why? No, I can't hide in my little pretend bubble of invisibility when you go up and talk to people. No. Oh, as it turned out, she was really proud of herself. She's like, I save up my coupons. This is all the tea I've used in an entire year. And she was all like, you know, strutting with her tea pride. And I am just like flushed crimson because I am like completely embarrassed that he's talking to this lady who I'm like, what is going on? Why is she buying a year's worth of tea? This is so weird. But it just goes to show he's a lot more social than I am. He's helped to bring me out of my shell as far as my YouTube videos go. Nate Granzo, no one else finds it strange that we're speculating on the appearance of her dad? Yeah, it's a little funny, but he doesn't like being on camera, so he's always behind camera, even though he's involved with a whole lot of the videos I do. He's not on my side of things. So I have a number of people who, I don't know, I guess have some questions about him, especially because I bring him up pretty frequently. Because he's a big part of my life. My family in general. Stephen Hildreth Jr. Hey, little boy. Opens trench coat. You want some tea? Black, green, Earl Grey? Whatever helps you fix. LOL. Yeah, it was... That was um, a particularly odd exchange. That lady with her fabulous old lady makeup. And she was wearing one of those, like, windbreaker su suits where it's the windbreaker jacket and the pants and... She was, she was something special. And of course, Dad had to go and talk to her. And I was all like, what? But it's just one example of how my dad's way more outgoing than I am. And how I live in a little shell. Uh, Eric Kmichek. By the way, I'm super sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. It kind of looks Polish, so I'm hoping that's the way to say it. My apologies if it's not. Feel free to correct me. Tell me I'm an idiot or whatever, you know. I miss Gun Bimbo. Hmm. <laughs> she is a fun character. I don't want to. I don't um, bring her out all the time just because um, she's a little silly. Well, a little like on the outer edge of what I'm comfortable with being silly. But I'm totally. I really enjoy the opportunity that that character character gives me to poke fun at myself, but still talk about something that you know people see kind of around the firearms industry. Oh, shoot. Um, I'm looking at the time, and we only have two minutes left in the live stream. So if you guys haven't already, I will have my, or check out thearmsguide.com. We have wonderful crew of writers. We put up content, new articles every day, and I really enjoy the material. It's for all, all ranges of um, skill level. Oh, sorry. And, oh, I have an article that I'm working on for the Bang Switch. So if you haven't checked out my work on thebangswitch.com, pop by there, leave a couple comments, let me know what you think. Um, oh, uh, I, of course, will have another YouTube video going live on youtube.com slash fate of destiny. So stay tuned for Thursday's video. And if you haven't gotten this, if you don't get the whole chat um, for any of my live streams, I will be posting this live stream at new, or if you're not for, let me try that in English, sorry. If you didn't make it to this entire live stream, I will be posting them on YouTube at the Fate of Destiny account. Also, I have a really huge giveaway. I'm doing my 50k giveaway soon, which I'm super elated about. I cannot believe my channel has gotten to that size already. But I really am going to need your help to pull off this giveaway. So stay tuned. Um, check out my Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash fate.of.destiny and facebook.com slash fate or the fate of destiny. And I will have more information on that as we approach that 50,000 subscriber goal or marker. It's not really a goal. 
<laughs> Dustin Stoner, English is good. Yeah, well, sometimes with when I get excited, I start talking too fast, and my mouth operates at a different speed than my brain, and I have to wait for my mouth to catch up with how, much, how quickly I think, and ends up with a lot of rambling and a lot of stumbling. <laughs> uh, Silver Feather. A competition shooter got shot in L.A. a couple years ago, so be careful not to be proud and up on a high horse. Someone with no skill with guns may win the gunfight. Oh, absolutely. Um, I have been to a match where a younger kid um, totally cleaned the clocks of some of the older shooters. And carrying and training isn't a, isn't a guarantee. I mean, if you're for self-defense, just because you have the tool does not mean that it's this, you know, vest of protection that you're just automatically going to survive any self-defense encounter into which you may uh, find yourself. But anyway, that is all the time we have. So thank you guys. It's been a really wonderful conversation. I had a blast and I hope you guys did too. And I hope I see you next week at new.livestream.com slash fate of destiny. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you.